Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, what I was thinking about uh, this past week, if you want to uh, discuss this with me, is relationships between people. And I got to thinking about something. There's a book written in 1950. It was called The Lonely Crowd. You ever heard of that book? Mm, no. Uh-uh. Um, this guy who was like a, he wasn't part of the Frankfurt School, but he was a Frankfurt School follower. His name was David Reisman or Reisman. Uh, he wrote this book and he did this study. Of course, I don't agree with everything in, in the study, but um, he basically, there was some stuff that was not in, totally incorrect, and that was that you could generalize a good portion of people and break them down into three types of descriptive uh, uh, mannerisms. Okay, uh-huh. and you had you had the uh, you had the traditional directed person, you had the inner directed person, and you had the other directed person. Okay. Uh-huh. And you know he goes over how you know you could you could be a variation of all of those at some point in your life, or you could be a mixture of those as well. But just for the sake of the study, you're just going to say that there's these three types. And um, the traditional directed person is someone who lives their life according to tradition. So someone who's religious, or you know, is very you know has a traditions that are passed down from generation to generation. And he goes over how these people, uh, by the by the time of the 1950s, were pretty much becoming obsolete. Yeah. And then you had the inner directed person who was less likely to really care about what other people think and kind of came at life from more of a perspective of just kind of doing what you want. Um, without any real regard for tradition, but it still kind of carried things over from an older time period. Uh-huh. And then you had the other directed person that he says in there was pretty much taking over society. And I wanted to touch on what what he this, what, what he was speculating what, what, what was taking over society. He kind of the part where I disagree with him is, is he saying that this person was taking over society and contributing to the mass consumers. I mean, take the Marxist philosophy view of Western culture, right? Uh-huh. But this, this other type is called the other directed type. And an other directed type is a person who, whose likes and dislikes and ideas and interests are all based around what other people are into Uh and it creates a chain downwards where you know if you have a total complete society of people who are interested in things that other people are doing and getting their ideas from others Mm -hmm. then then um, you are able to uh, create an entire culture for people that will that will, uh, go, you know, make a chain downwards to, to, you know, it will contribute to consumerism, of course, and being able to sell people like that a, lo- a whole lot of products. Yeah. But what it also does, and he doesn't really touch on this, is it, it creates an emotionally, uh, an emotionally codependent society. Uh huh. Yeah. And people are now, um, you, you know, the, the big thing about uh, privacy, right? Uh huh. It, it's not really so much that you know, oh, the government's spying on everything that I do, right? Uh-huh. That bothers me. That bothers me personally. I always thought the most bothersome thing is, like, take for instance, in the old days, someone would keep a diary. Yeah. And a diary remained private until you died. Uh huh. And now people publish their daily journals and things online so other people can see it. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, I know. 
so the privacy, it's not even so much like, like when someone's talking about privacy or whatever, you know, that you automatically link that to, oh, the government's spying on me. I'd rather link it to um, people don't even have a concept of privacy. They don't want privacy. And this is just evident in just the time I've been working within, um, you know, places of business for, I guess, over 15 years now. And maybe you can concur with this. If you give someone an inch, as far as, like, how was your weekend, Chris? And I don't know you personally. Like, say, like, say we're, we're, we're not friends. We're just, like, people who work together. Mm-hmm. People are ready to tell you their life story. Yeah, 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 I've noticed that. Uh-huh. They, I mean, they are, they are ready to tell you their life story. There is no... There's no privacy. There's no. Um, uh, there's no concept of keeping things to yourself. Well, this and and it has more to do with that. These people feel the need. It's like a selfishness, but at the same time, it, it, it's schizophrenic because they actually desire someone to listen to them. Uh huh. Yeah. And the thing of it is, is most of these people, if, if you were to tell them, if you were to say, okay, let me tell you about my weekend, they don't, they will not listen to anything you have to say. No, it's like it's not a conversation. It's like a, uh, it's it's more like, um, I, I get the impression, I've, I've heard this too, it's like there's, there's a ter- certain type of person and uh, it's something that's inculcated into people. I, I don't think it's something that comes from with, naturally within people. It's just, it's this, um, it's, it's a mentality that in order to validate one's own existence, you have to have, you have to always have something bounced off another person. Like anything, and anything. Or it's like it, it, it is not valid or valuable that's uh, you, what it seems you, like you hit, you hit my you hit my thoughts right on the head as usual uh, I, I was thinking I was actually gonna go there next yeah yeah I know I know people just like that mm-hmm. yeah they need what, what they need to do is is because they lack 